great to welcome uh, to our show today on our Book Talk segment, one of the co-authors, really fascinating book uh, all about creativity and uh, how the mind works and what makes us uh, creative. It's called Wired to Create, Unraveling the Mysteries of the Creative Mind. We're joined today by Scott Barry uh, Kaufman, one of the co-authors of the book. Very interesting title he has, the scientific director of the Imagination Institute in the Positive Psychology Center at the University of Pennsylvania. He joins us from uh, New York City today. Scott, good to talk with you. How are you? Oh, it's delightful to talk to you, too. I'm, I'm good. That's a, that's a great job you have. It sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I just daydream all day. <laughs> the Imagination Institute, kind of, kind of like something that you might hear at Disney. <laughs> that's right. That's part of the Epcot ride, Journey to Your Imagination with Figgy. Yeah. <laughs> I took that about a year ago. I hadn't been there in a while, and it, it, it's, it's a great ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could sing a song for you, but uh, maybe you'd lose listeners if I did. Yeah, that's right. Well, it is a fascinating subject to, uh, to you know, everybody says you're creative, but what, what actually makes you creative? So you, you've studied that, right? You've come up with ten different uh, qualities. I guess that uh, or habits I guess of the mind right that help creativity that's right that's absolutely right and uh, some of them may seem contradictory but I think that's uh, a big point of the book is that creative people um, are very flexible in switching back and forth between all of these uh, modes of existence yeah I guess everybody I was going to say I mentioned a couple of them but I mean everybody has their own way of creativity you know being creative a lot of people daydream others uh, you know take a walk I guess Uh, uh, but but, yeah give a couple of examples Um, yeah you just gave some and uh is be open to new experiences and um, being uh, sensitive and mindful of your environment and as well as your inner experiences and um, being a nonconformist and constantly questioning the status quo and um, and, and embracing the unknown. Uh, these are these are some of the things we talk about. Yeah, hey, I've uh, you know heard interviews with uh, particularly musicians or songwriters where a lot of them will say they get their songs some in a dream, some would just come to them. So it's kind of hard to pin down exactly where we get ideas from, right? Uh, I guess they're a conglomerate of different things, or or do they come out of the thin air, maybe from uh, someone up above, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think a lot of it comes from our subconscious. Mm-hmm. Our subconscious is good, really good at uh, getting to work on our ideas. and uh, we, we, The moments like when we're taking a shower, we think that um, it's a completely passive environment, or when we're sleeping, we think it's useless activity. But it's really not. I mean, we uh, get to work during the day, and uh, our unconscious and our during, during our down times uh, tries to fill in the gaps. Yeah, your mind is always, I guess, trying to figure things out, isn't it? Isn't that, isn't that the point oh, of yeah. dreams, right? Uh, it's trying to make sense. Yeah. Of all the things that happen yeah. to you during the day, what uh, from your studies, or well, I guess a better question is, uh, how did you study this? Uh, I guess you interviewed a lot of different creative people, I would think, right? Oh, you know, past uh, ten years, I've I've done some research on the science of creativity and just bringing everyday people into the laboratory and um, giving them personality tests and and uh, asking what level of creative achievement they've had. Um, and, uh, and also, I'm not the only one doing this, so for the past 50 years, lots of great scientists have been studying the, the science of creativity, and we're, tr- we're trying to put all the, the, the pieces of the puzzle together, and th- this book was uh, my attempt to bring lots of these threads of research together. Yeah, you mentioned uh, one of the, uh, the, the habits of uh, uh, being creative is to kind of be nonconformist, uh, at least at times, right? Because you, you think within the box, uh, you, you limit yourself, so you have to kind of think outside the box. Yes, yes. You need to... As E. Paul Torrance said, you need to be comfortable being a minority of one. You know, having an idea um, and you know being confident that uh, that, that there's uh, there's something there, even even amongst criticism and setback. Uh, you, you really need to persevere there. Yeah, I went to a, a high school that. Uh, fortunately, uh, kind of nurtured, you know, the thinking creatively uh, a lot of the time. I know that isn't always the case in the education system. Uh, kids naturally are more creative at a certain age, a young age, right? Then you sort of lose that, I guess, unless you nurture it along the way, right? Yeah, we lose it because we grow up and we get enculturated in, um, in a standardized testing environment. We're, we're constantly being told that there's only one good way to, to reach a path. And people don't realize there's actually many paths to greatness. How about in the workforce? Uh, I, I guess you're seeing many companies now, particularly the ones that have uh, come out with, like you know, Google and Apple and those that have come out with different uh, you know, devices and all that. I guess they nurture it, but that isn't always the case in the work world. They, they, you know, it's tough to be creative sometimes, right? It's tough. It's tough. You know, you have deadlines. You have um, uh, there's such a focus on efficiency. 
in, in uh, lots of corporations. And so, I mean, if their bottom line isn't creativity and you have a creative mind, you might want to look elsewhere, you know? Like, it, you don't, there's not a great, you're not necessarily like everything in life is going to be a good fit for you. And you, need to, you need to be aware of that. You talked in the book, too, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, you know, there's always been kind of the thought that creative geniuses sometimes are, uh, you know, a little bit off the track uh, as far as the behavior <laughs> goes. Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I know I was ever framed it like that before. Well, I was I being that. kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I describe the creative minds as messy minds because they, um, they, you know, they can go back and forth to, between fantasy to reality to daydreaming to mindfulness. It's not always a linear trajectory to the um, the final product. Uh, they're much more uh, interested in the journey. They're internally driven as well. What about left brain, right brain? You hear about that all the time. Does that have anything? Does it play at all into this, or not much diff? Not much uh, factor. That's a very common thing that the, you know the right brain is um, creative, the left brain is boring. But <laughs> it's not. It's such a gross <laughs> distinction. Um, what we're seeing is it makes more sense to be talking about large scale brain networks, and and all that means is that different parts of the brain work together to solve a certain task or uh, process the world. In a particular way, and that draws in both the left brain and the right brain. I would say creativity is more a whole brain thing. You need both sides to make it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a fascinating book. Uh, we just touched on a, you know, a couple of the, uh, the the topics in it, but I really enjoyed reading through it. It's called Wired to Create, Unraveling the Mysteries of the Creative Mind. Really inspiring, too. I think more people need to uh, to tap into their creativity, whether it's at work or just your, your home life. Uh, it's uh, it's a good thing to do. And we've been talking with Scott Barry Kaufman, uh, also wrote the book with Carolyn uh, Gregoire. Do you have a website, Scott, you want to direct people to? Yeah, we have the Wired to Create Book dot com. So it's called Wired to Create Book dot com. Great. Well, Scott, pleasure talking to you. Thanks for joining us, and hopefully we can talk to you again down the road. Oh, it was great fun. You have a great day. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids, right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.